Hi everyone and welcome to Let's Get Your Shift Together. My name is Adriana and I am I guess obviously the <laughs> host of this channel or whatever you want to call it. Um, I am shitting my pants right now because this is the first YouTube video I've ever done and this is so out of my comfort zone and this is freaking me out just a bit and uh, I mean, <laughs> this is this is really not something I normally do. I'm usually pretty quiet. I'm a very private person. I don't like to expose anything of myself on social media or online at all. So um, yeah, I'm shitting my pants here. <laughs> and I'm pretty much here today to talk about tension myositis syndrome, um, also known as TMS, also known as mind-body syndrome, also known as tension myoneural syndrome, I guess there's like other names, whatever. Um, and my experience with figuring out what the heck that was and how that has completely changed and kind of saved my life in a way. Yeah, it saved my life, I could say that, um, because I really was in such a dark place with my chronic pain. Um, I guess I'll start off with a little about me. So I'm 30 years old, oh my God revealed my age <laughs> and I'm from Canada I live in Toronto the greater Toronto area and uh, I have recently managed to get myself out of chronic pain how I did this is going to take a very long time for me to explain so there's going to be obviously more than one video uh, so join my journey in like TMS recovery <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun on this channel. I might make a podcast. I made a website called www.letsgetyourshifttogether.com. Uh, my same thing as my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram with the exact same name. And I just plan to share a bunch of stuff about TMS, how to figure out if you t have TMS. If you're here, you probably have TMS. I It doesn't matter if what you call it. It could be fibromyalgia. It could be TMJ dysfunction, it could be carpal tunnel, it could be IBS, it could be ulcers, it could be like pretty much anything. And um, I'm here to kind of get into that. So that being said, <laughs> I made notes cause you know, I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> and uh, this is my first YouTube video, so. <laughs> so how it started for me was, uh, or how I thought it started for me was in 2015. I got my wisdom teeth taken out and in my opinion, it was a botched job and the dentist took like zero responsibility for it. I ended up going to a lawyer. Um, I had a case, but I, the legal system in Canada, I just, I, no comment. There was no point in proceeding with anything because the amount of money that I would have gained from it, I would have spent on legal fees. So it was just a complete like shit show. So June of 2015, I was urged by my dentist to get my wisdom teeth taken out because I kept getting infections on my gums because my teeth were impacted. And I was told 10 years prior to get my wisdom teeth taken out. So I finally did because the whole thing of like, oh, you're going to keep going on antibiotics and then you are going to die because you're going to get resistant to antibiotics and you're never going to get better. And if you keep going on antibiotics, it's bad for your gut and then you die pretty much, right? Like that's, that's kind of how, you know, we have those negative thought patterns from what we get told by the medical professionals. And um, yeah, so basically I figured I'm screwed because I keep getting tooth infections, so I better get my wisdom teeth taken out because this is like the eighth dentist and or, and or dental hygienist who has told me that it's about time to get my wisdom teeth taken out. So I did it, they said like, if I go in on a Friday, I'll be fine by the Monday, I can go back to work and everything will be honky dory and whatever. And that was so not what happened. And that began the downward spiral of my life turning into a complete utter shit show. And um, yeah, I managed to eventually figure it all out in 2019, uh, in January of this year. And it was a bit of a journey and I can actually finally say I'm out of chronic pain. So back to my teeth, <laughs> because I just feel like I need to explain more of this story because I want you to know that I was in your shoes. I was definitely in your shoes with chronic pain. So I want to emphasize that this isn't bullshit. This is completely 100% real. I can show you the MRI of my jaw and uh, whatever. Just if you need further proof that like this is serious, really, this is seriously real. Um, so yeah, basically I was in so much pain after I got my wisdom teeth taken out. My face felt like it was gonna explode. Um, I kept going back to the dentist. I went back at least three times to say like, hey, these painkillers you gave me are not helping. My face feels like it's gonna explode. 
please, for the love of God, help. And the dentist kept saying, oh, everything looks fine. Like, I don't know why you're in so much pain. Let's try a different painkiller. Let's get you on some tramadol. Let's get you on some T3s. And it was just a, an utter shit show. And take ibuprofen and Tylenol at the same time. And uh, yeah, let's just, let's just do that. And you're gonna be fine because everything's fine and this is healing. Oh, okay. So three and a half weeks later of this pattern of going back to the dentist, getting new painkillers, trying different things to relieve my pain, nothing, nothing helped. By three and a half weeks, I, I felt like I was gonna die. Like literally my face, like my, like I wasn't even that swollen, which is the crazy part, but my inside of my face felt like it was going to implode in itself. And like, I just felt like I was gonna die because it was so painful. So I ended up going to an emergency dentist and they finally diagnosed me with dry sockets on all four freaking sockets. And if you don't know what that is, I'm not even gonna get into it. It's just like the worst, it's the worst outcome of getting your wisdom teeth taken out. Um, I beg to differ because even more worse shit would happen over the next four years. Um, but yeah, apparently that was the worst thing that could happen. So I was in so much pain, I had to go on antibiotics. My body went into shock because I got off of all the painkillers and that, that was fun. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, so after that, I switched dentists because, <laughs> you know, had to. And uh, I was getting those like clove treatments in the dry socket and it was just, it was, it was as disgusting as it sounds. Like I just, I can't even smell cloves now without like just flashbacks, ew, gross. And um, yeah, like then my gum grew weird and then they had to cut my gum like a month after that and like that was just it, it was just I, I if I could have gone back in time and decided to never get my wisdom teeth taken out that's probably what I would have done but now that I'm on the other side of things um, I guess I wouldn't have had it any other way because now I can actually use my horrible experience to help people which is what I really that's the purpose of everything I'm doing here um, I'm in training to become a life coach for chronic pain. Um, I'm pretty sure I can do it before I graduate or whatever, it's just a certificate. So I mean, my services are listed on the website if you're interested. If you're not interested, that's fine too. Just watch these videos, that, this might help. My main goal is to help you help yourself. So after I got the all the crap figured out with my teeth, got my gum redone, whatever happened there, um, the dentist uh, realized, yeah, you have TMJ from, you know, clenching your jaw for the past three weeks, having undiagnosed dry socket, you're still in pain. When you open your mouth, there's a deviation. So basically when you open your mouth, it goes like up and down like this. Mine, it did a little zigzag and then it lit a little zigzag coming back. So I was like, holy shit, what do I do? Go to physiotherapy. Okay, so I was in physio for, uh, I don't know, like nine months or something like that, something crazy. And it, I guess it helped a little, but then, you know, the pain would come back. So then I tried other stuff. Um, I tried a chiropractor, then I tried acupuncture, then I tried the chiropractor again, then I tried Botox injections to like paralyze my face so I would stop grinding at night and maybe that would help. And I, I had like the bite guard and all that kind of stuff too. Um, and then I got to a point of desperation of uh, nerve block injections. Then I got to the point where like, let's see if there's any TMJ specialists. So I went to one of those and they told me that my, I had to get all these weird x-rays done and I had to get an MRI. So the MRI showed that the right side of my jaw was pretty much in my ear, which that's pretty messed up if you ask me. And if you're in that much pain every single day, like I was having migraines every single day, these migraines would last anywhere from like 24 to 72 hours. It was, it was, it sucked. It really sucked. I lost friends. I couldn't make it to people's birthday parties anymore. Like I couldn't hang out. I would have to cancel last minute because I was in so much pain and I had a migraine. And like, then I lost friends because no one could rely on me because I always cancel. And I mean, I had to cancel because I was dying of pain and that's not easy for people who are not in pain to understand. So I get it. I totally get it. Um, and I'm sure you get it too, because you're obviously here because you're probably in chronic pain. So I'm sure you get it. Um, so yeah, I went to this specialist, um, great at his work, but I mean, again, I managed to get myself out of it without 
completing my treatment. So that started out with, um, so the MRI, my jaws and my ear. Okay, that explains all the ear pain I get, that explains all the headaches I get on this side of my face, that explains just so many things, and then my face was lopsided, and it was just, like, it just was like, no wonder I'm in so much pain, wow, and I guess this must have happened when they pulled my tooth out, and it kind of, maybe, I don't know, I don't know, because no one could really tell me how this happened, so then I'm being told that because of the measurements of my jaw, so I had to get this other weird, like, cone x-ray on my jaw, which measured literally everything, it was like a 3D x-ray, I, I don't understand this stuff, um, but Regardless, it basically said that like my lower jaw was too big for my upper jaw So like it was like too long or whatever and then that's kind of what made it push itself into my ear And I don't know maybe the wisdom teeth were leverage. I I really don't know I was trying I was starting to come up with all these crazy ideas and whatever on why this would have happened after getting a routine dental procedure and couldn't really make sense out of anything, but regardless so then I started splint therapy and uh that sucked because i had to wear this like piece of crap two pieces of crap in my mouth 24 7 and i couldn't speak properly i had like this lisp i couldn't eat and i had to eat with this splint in my mouth so i had to carry a freaking toothbrush with me all around like it was just it was just like i mean i thought this is what i had to do in order to be out of pain so and then after a series of months of the splint therapy, I would get braces. And that pissed me off because I had braces when I was 10. And like literally 20 years ago, I had braces. I went through this, my teeth were perfect. My teeth were literally perfect. I had no reason to get braces. This was so not for cosmetics. And so here I am with this splint and it's widening my jaw. So I'm getting all these gaps in my teeth. So that was traumatizing because I never had gaps in my teeth. They're like for the past 20 years, my teeth were perfect. And now like, I look like shit. I can't smile in photos anymore. I look weird. Um, and then I had to get braces <laughs> to close those gaps because they had to like reshape my skull with the, yeah. Anyways, let's fast forward to, okay. So August, August is when I got the braces. That was fun. Um, the second week into the treatment with the actual braces, I had vertigo for a week. That was horrible. <laughs> so it literally felt like I was, um, you know, when you're on a plane and it kind of goes like the turbulence. I felt like I was experiencing turbulence for a week. Um, so then we didn't change my first wire in September because I was so sensitive to the treatment. So in October, we changed my wire, mid-October. And this is literally where all the fun begins. So mid-October of 2018, get my wire changed, whatever. A week later, my jaw moved. This was great, I was so happy, I was so excited about it. Like my jaw moved forward, which is what it was supposed to do because like the front teeth were like opening up and it made the space and like, yay. So I was super excited. So this was on a Thursday. On a Friday, October, I think it was like the 26th or something. I'm weird with dates like that sometimes because this was this was a very significant turning point, for lack of a better word. Um, I was out with my friend. We went for dinner. And then I start getting this like shooting pain on the side of my head. I was starting to get a migraine. Okay, I thought. I get these all the time. This is happening because my jaw moved. This is why I'm getting a migraine. That's fine, I got this. I will be feeling like shit for a few days, tops, and then everything's gonna be okay because my jaw is getting better and we're fixing it and everything will sort itself out. Okay, Saturday rolls along, I'm dying. I am like in worse pain than I was on the Friday. I took my um, the pills for the uh, migraines didn't do shit for me. I called the orthodontist. He told me to go to the chiropractor because my muscles are in spasms. Okay, I go to the chiropractor. He did whatever he did. Mm. I didn't really feel that much better. I felt like maybe, I don't know, one, 2% better after, but I still felt like shit. I couldn't do anything for the rest of the day, for the rest of the weekend. Then Saturday night, I noticed it hurt to brush my teeth. Like it was, there was some real sensitivity like up in my gums over here on the top. 
Weird. I looked at it. Everything looked fine. Okay. Sunday rolls along. It really hurt now. Like, and this migraine wasn't going away. It really, really hurt to brush my teeth at this point. I decided to look in my mouth again. And there's these weird little cuts on the roof of my mouth. And I'm thinking, well, that's weird. I don't remember eating glass today or recently or anything. What the hell is this? So I was thinking it was like one of the appliances in my mouth that maybe shifted and cut me somehow. So Monday, I went to the orthodontist and he's looking at it and he's like, this is not from the appliance, but we're going to take, I had like an ALF appliance at the top. Um, so that that's supposed to also continue widening your jaw or whatever. Um, he took that out to like make me feel more comfortable. And then he's looking at it and he's like, this is like, this looks like a cold sore. And I was like, okay, like I, I've never had one before. So I know I don't have that virus. And I mean, it just doesn't make sense that I would suddenly get this virus. And if I did, like my husband has some explaining to do, <laughs> but um, <laughs> like this made no sense to me whatsoever that it would be a cold sore. So I'm telling him this, that like that, I, I don't get those. I, I, this doesn't make sense. And then he's like, have you ever had chicken pox? Like, well, yes, I have had chicken pox and I have had shingles, had shingles in 2011, like eight years ago, seven years ago at the time, um, on my back. And like, I guess, cause that's the remnants of chicken pox. It just reactivates. So he's like, you might have shingles. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you have to be fucking kidding me. Like I, I cannot have shingles in my mouth. Like that's not, this is not real life. Like, no, no way. Like I just could not accept that. And he literally said like, you need to go to your family doctor cause you, if it is shingles, like you need to get on the antivirals right away. So I'm like, holy shit. So go to the family doctor, same day. It's shingles in my mouth on the bad side while I have braces, okay? I got the antivirals. I got a mouth numbing rinse that I was supposed to use four times a day that I actually was using every hour, every half an hour, really, because I, I was gonna die. Like this was, I can't even put into words how painful this was. Um, just think about, I don't know, acid being poured on inside your jaw, in your skin, and someone putting a flame, like a torch, setting you on fire in your mouth constantly, 24 seven. Yeah, I thought I was, I, I wanted to die at that point. Like I was, I was in so much pain and I just like reached the conclusion that like, okay, like I'm never gonna recover from this. This is, this is, this is my life. This is horrible. And I just, I, I don't understand. And I would like to get hit by a bus. Like I reached some very dark places during this and I mean, I, I use humor to deflect a lot. So like, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, but like, this is a very serious topic, but like, that's just, that's just how I like, I'm not trying to poke fun at like anyone who has those types of thoughts. Um, they were real for me. I really didn't see a way to go on. So meh, I really didn't know what I was going to do. So, I mean, I had shingles before. Lucky me, twice by the age of 30. Wow, like that's what you're supposed to get that when you're a senior citizen, if, if you're like unlucky. Um, and Cause you know, I'm not even old enough to get vaccinated for it yet. So like, awesome, cool. Uh, so I, I knew it was like five weeks of hell. I knew, I, I knew what I was in for, for five weeks. I knew that's the worst of it. And then after five weeks, I should be okay. The first week was the worst. Like it was just, I, I was, I was ugly crying in tears. Um, my husband did not know what to do. <laughs> um, poor guy. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was surprised he even stuck with me to be honest. Um, <laughs> but you know, I guess that's, that's marriage, right? So, but like, I just felt so flawed that like, I'm going through this horrible thing that my husband's going to leave me because I'm not like the perfect wife because I I'm dying of pain here. And I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, you go, your mind goes there when you're going through that. Um, and it, it sucks. Like, it really sucks. But, um, yeah, so the first week was horrible. I was literally ugly crying every night. Um, I, I wanted, I wanted to die. 
it was it was so bad like I just I couldn't believe how much pain I was in like I thought I felt the worst pain when I had the dry socket um, I thought I had the worst pain when I had carpal tunnel surgery which is also TMS um, so I did end up getting carpal tunnel in 2017 here's my little scar if you can see it oh you can barely see it but like right there so I did have the surgery um, that sucked as soon as the anesthesia wore off, I thought I was gonna die. Um, so I thought that was bad, but no, this was like new ball game, next level. Like, I mean, and I, I've had the migraines, I've had the TMJ issues, I've had carpal tunnel. This was by far the worst thing, the worst pain I have ever felt in my life. And Knowing what I knew from having shingles the last time eight years ago, um, I still felt the post neuralgia, whatever, the post whatever it's called. Um, so I still felt the like sensation in my back from having shingles the first time. Didn't really bother me because I was so used to it. Um, but if I thought about it, I could feel it. Anytime I would come out down with um, like a cold or any type of viral thing, I would feel it in my back before so like that's I kind of knew when I was gonna get sick which was kind of weird um, but I started freaking the fuck out because to have that in your back is one thing but to have that in your mouth is like mm, I don't know about this I don't know how I'm going to go on <laughs> having this for the rest of my life like because obviously if it happened on my back and I still feel it eight years later, what the hell is gonna happen with my face? And it was my trigeminal nerve that got affected. So literally this nerve that does all that and like kind of branches into here, like this, all this was like, it felt like it was on fire. My right eye here was swollen. Um, the, like my face was like, this side of my face was puffy. And of course I had like the shingles outbreak in my mouth because you know the universe was playing a fucking joke on me or something like I've I I don't even it's just like it, it was just like a, I thought I was being punked I'm like okay like wh where's Kutcher am I being punked what's happening here <laughs> like I can't so that being said that was a shit show and then the pain continued and sure it wasn't as bad after five weeks but to have this electrifying nerve pain here, like right here, it's it's horrible. Like I, I didn't eat for a month. Like I'm literally trying to gain weight now because none of my clothes fit because I did not eat for a month. Like I was drinking like those nutritional shakes and like just eating soup all the time whenever I could eat, whenever I had the appetite to eat because I was in so much pain that I was nauseous. Um, and I was very limited on how many painkillers I could take because I had just gotten an ulcer in July, so wow like i really thought like the universe was playing a fucking joke on me and this couldn't be real and i i really like my mind went to very dark places and i really had no idea what the hell i was gonna do so i got a referral for a neurologist i live in canada our health system not the quickest um so as soon as i got like the email confirming that which neurologist they're gonna send me to I called them and I said hey I'm dying I have like trigeminal neuralgia from uh, shingles and I, I I don't know what I'm gonna do so um, like how long is this gonna take um, and the girl on the phone said it's a 16 to 18 month wait to see the neurologist and I was like holy shit you have to be kidding me like this can't be real so I called up my pain specialist who I went to for like all the nerve blocks and the Botox injections and whatnot because I, I didn't know what else to do so I'm like okay like can we inject something in my face here like just like I, I don't want to feel my face I don't want to have a face anymore um, I, I don't want to feel like let's just sever my brain stem or something like I don't know I just I can't feel this I I will die if I continue to feel like this every single day. Um, so I got a bunch of nerve blocks. I was going like twice a week, every week for several weeks. And then um, I did the Botox to calm it down too, because apparently that helps with post shingles pain. Um, it's bullshit. <laughs> it really didn't help at all. Okay, so that brings us to um, December and very low point in my life. So December of 2018. Um, 
there's there's more like there's more crap that happened in the four years like this is really just skimming the surface um i will probably share more of it um eventually but this is my first video and i don't want to ramble too much so i will get to the point of uh like where what i discovered what to do and how i eventually cured myself so this is i guess the part you've all been waiting for um if that was boring i'm sorry but i just want to be anyone who is going through chronic pain to like really get the fact that like i i i fucking know what you were going through like i know so january 2019 the year we're in right now is april i holy shit like <laughs> i was still in so much pain and just this nerve was just like screaming at me like screaming and it was it was annoying it was interfering with my life it was you know like i it was very hard for me to go to work um which i had to do because you can't just not work um you know i live in toronto so like rent is like through the roof so like not working is not an option and you know just it, it i just had to like not drown like i had to do whatever i could to not drown but i was drowning already um and i was just like so desperate for some kind of relief and i did everything to relieve myself from the pain like i tried the cbd oil and everything and like honestly like it would barely touch the pain like okay i did a little bit but did it really make a massive impact on my pain no like i was still like it was still just like there so i kept seeing this ad on social media like on facebook and instagram for this app called curable so i figured like i mean i saw it in the past but like in the past i was just like i just brushed it off i was like okay like how is an app going to help me i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand how i need to think about my pain to not be in pain um this doesn't make any sense and this is bullshit so january rolls along i'm just i'm dying i'm <laughs> like figuratively obviously um and i'm just I, I just needed some kind of relief and i saw the ad again so i was like okay how does how does it's just so creepy how like the algorithms or whatever like they know that what to advertise to you so i took a leap of faith and i downloaded this app and then i realized it was a subscription service and then they had like a deal if you sign up for a year it's only a hundred bucks canadian and uh might as well give it a try so I didn't even like look into it. I was that desperate. Like I was just at a point where it's like, I have literally nothing to lose at this point. Let's spend the money on an app and let's see what happens. So I paid for the app. I paid for one year <laughs> and then I went to my first exercise and I was so pissed because <laughs> that's when I learned that uh, basically they made a connection to physical pain to emotional pain and i was like oh hell no like i don't have emotional pain um i i've i've been through some shit i've seen some shit but i i you know i got past everything so i like this is i'm i, I wasted a hundred dollars like what what the fuck did i just do so and it was like talking about like tms theory which uh dr sarno um coined that term um basically it stands for tension myositis syndrome and that is basically when we are very young so before we're even able to remember we learn patterns on repression we repress our emotions we repress our negative emotions so you know when you're like a two-year-old having a tantrum in the store like your your parents want you to shut up and you know they do whatever they can to shut you up and that's how you learn very early in life to repress emotions so it's repressed rage it's repressed anger and then as you continue your life you continue to repress these negative emotions because it's wrong and society says it's wrong to be angry um no one likes a negative nancy you know like you know what they say like you know you're not gonna there's like societal norms that we have to adhere to obviously like you can't just have a frigging temper tantrum at work because like you'll probably get fired and like you are going to be labeled as having a bad attitude if you don't get fired um and yeah like it, it 
kind of started making sense to me. Um, I did a few, they had like, so the app, it's, it's super awesome. Like I would recommend it to literally anybody. Um, it's called Curable. I'll, I'll link it or something. Um, and basically you can, there's like different types of exercises. You can do some writing exercises. You can do meditations. There's, um, education lessons and brain training exercises. So I did like one of each in the first week. And then, cause at that point, like I was already pissed off. <laughs> like, honestly, I was, I was so mad that I spent this money on this app and it sounds like bullshit and I can't get a refund, so I'm just gonna try it. Why not? And I was, I went into it with like a massive grain of salt. I was not expecting any kind of result whatsoever. And um, yeah, so I just, I used it for a week, did some writing exercises, did some meditations, listened to some of the podcasts. And um, after one week, I noticed a 10% reduction in my pain. So I was like, holy shit, maybe this app is onto something. Maybe this wasn't a waste of money. <laughs> Um, if you don't want to get the app, um, there are ways to work through TMS that don't involve paying for the app. Um, there's a few other TMS, uh, champions who I've listened to their podcasts as well. Um, there's Nicole Sachs, there is Caitlin Michaels, and, um, like they recommend journaling every day. So you basically set a timer for 20 minutes and you just journal and it doesn't have to be about anything. And you don't need to have a plan about what you're gonna talk about. And you're just going to be that five-year-old, that two-year-old with the repressed whatever is going on and just let the pen go or let your fingers go if you're typing it into your computer, or your laptop, whatever. Um, and you just, you just write for 20 minutes, not stopping. And then once you're done, you rip up the paper and you move on with your life. And basically the idea is your thoughts are not real. So just because you think of something, it doesn't mean that it's real. And the journaling is a way to get that out. Because if you have a thought that is like you're angry at somebody like, oh, I'm so mad at my friend. She's such a bitch. She did this to me. She wronged me in this way. And I'm so pissed off and I hate her and I want to strangle her. You don't actually want to do it it's just a thought but that thoughts there and then if you don't get it out where's it gonna go you're repressing it and that turns into pain over time so it makes sense it made total sense to me and um, you know like the more I kept doing this work the more I kept um, using the curable app and journaling and listening to all the podcasts and then watching dr. Sarno's uh, like lectures on YouTube, they're all over the place on YouTube, um, and just watching other people's videos of success stories, I, I was just amazed. And I had eventually, like, I don't even want to say what timeline it took me to get to the point of 100% pain free, because then that might set up some expectations for you. And I don't want you to have expectations. It's really all about, um, are you willing to do the work? And it's hard work and it's not easy work it's it's very difficult work because this is this is stuff you have repressed this is stuff you've forgotten about this is stuff that happened in your childhood that you thought you were past and you know why wouldn't you think you were past it like so much time has passed but like it's what you do in that time that helps you deal with whatever it is and um, so yeah, like there's like, I'll, I'll do more videos about this. Cause I mean, I just, I just want to like dump all my information <laughs> onto you like right now, because I want you to get better right now. And I want to give you all the tools you need right now, but I can't like, this is just going to become like a, like you're going to get bored. <laughs> um, so I need to definitely split this up. But like, I mean, bottom line, you can get yourself out of your physical pain. Um, I am here to help you with that. I, you need to do the work. I can't do the work for you. And I mean, that's kind of stating the obvious, but like once you start doing the work and like you start seeing like the difficulty in doing it, but then you start seeing the results from doing it, that's when like the light bulb will start going off. Um, and you really have nothing to lose. Like just 
get a pen and paper and just write and destroy it after. And um, you might be amazed at what you write about because like there were times where like I still I still journal. Um, I still do it every night ish uh, <laughs> most nights and um, like you might be surprised at like what you uncover like there were so many things where I was just like oh my god like it's like inner child work like oh my god like I hated children for the longest time because of my thoughts of like how children are supposed to be because of my upbringing if that makes any sense and like now I've realized like I was such a bitch <laughs> like how can you blame a child for um like not being an adult right away and then you put all that pressure on you growing up and then like that's all like repressed crap and then no wonder we have chronic pain it's such a mind body connection because like your brain is like an organ in your body and like I don't think people actually see it that way it's like this thing that like you don't really like think of it as like a physical organ or at least I never really thought of it as that I just thought like oh yeah my brain like ooh, it's like this this weird thing and like it does whatever it does and whatever but like it's it's a literal like thing <laughs> within you that um, has like all these neural pathways and these neural pathways basically dictate your life kind of um, like I'll get into that more but like how you learn to do things is how you will continue to do things as you, you know, progress in life or whatever. And um, you can actually like reprogram it. Like you, you literally can. Like it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. It's actually crazy. Cause if this is something you've never heard of, it's just like the most mind blasting thing ever. And trust me, if, if someone came to me before January of 2019, and said that like oh yeah you have tension myositis syndrome um and you just need to write and you're gonna get better i would have punched that person in the face and i would have told them to like go get shingles <laughs> in your mouth while you're getting tmj treatment and then let's talk and like i had to be in a place where i was like ready like i didn't care anymore about anything um and I just wanted relief. And I didn't care how I was going to get that relief. I just wanted the relief. And then I just decided, no, well, let's just, let me just open my mind. And that's, that's what you need. Like you don't need to understand neural connections and all that kind of crap. Um, you just need to be open-minded to make this work or to allow this to work for you, if that makes sense. Um, so if you're open-minded, stick around. I will have more videos. I plan on like just sharing a lot of like both my experience and like just my understanding of things. And um, like I've literally like reached the conclusion that I need to become a life coach for people with chronic pain. Like that is, that is the type of impact that this has made on my life. Like I, I have been an office monkey for ever since I graduated university and I thought like that was like my career like just just get an office job with benefits and like you're doing great um, and I really like I don't want to say I didn't really have aspirations I just really didn't think I had other options uh, because like what what other skills do I have like I don't know and like do I need to go back to school or something um, to do something else with my life and what the hell do I want to do with my life and now that I have been able to get myself out of pain I figured it out like I need to I need to I need to tell everybody about this like I need to help all the people who are in chronic pain um, this is my calling <laughs> um, I know I probably sound a little crazy saying that but like I, I really believe in this like this obviously worked for me um, like my friends are in shock, my husband's in shock, like everyone, like I have such a different outlook on life now that I'm not in pain. Like it's amazing what chronic pain can do for you to really, really get you into like such a dark place in life. And then it's amazing when you get out of that chronic pain, how you realize like, oh, the world's kind of my oyster. I didn't see it this way before. Like, holy shit. Like I... Can do something useful with my life and I just feel like 
helping people recover from chronic pain is something useful that I can do with my life because I am one of those people who like I love helping people and it's fulfilling to me to help so that's that's pretty much I, I, I know I've said this like a thousand times like and I'm just repeating myself now but I just you know I just really want to bring that point home um, yeah so I guess I'll end this video here and uh, yes this this is enough for my first video <laughs> I will make more videos. I'm not going to pressure myself into a timeline uh, on when I will have more videos, but they're coming. Um, I didn't think I would make a video this soon, so I mean, I'm sure I'll have a new video tomorrow or like next week or something. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, let's get your shift together. <laughs> like, what can I say, right? Um, I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, you have any suggestions for like my future videos on like what kind of aspects of chronic pain you want me to cover or like more parts of my story which I mean I will go through um, but like if there's anything specific like just feel free to comment or send me an email at let's get your shift together at gmail.com or message me on YouTube or Instagram um, and yeah have a great rest of your day whatever time it is and uh, yeah see you soon